god! <laughs> that was sick! Welcome back to the channel. My name is Clay Wong. Today I'm super excited because we are showcasing a very serious car. This is a vehicle that's been built with the drag setup in mind, however, it is ultimately still a street car, and this is definitely the most sleeper of cars that I've ever featured out here on the channel. And this is it, guys. This is a 2001 Lexus IS300. And from the outset, this is a car that looks very much like a standard vehicle. However, under the skin of this car is a fully built and forged big turbo 2JZ engine and it's making 520 rear wheel kilowatts of power. This is a monumental build and I can't wait to see how it drives and I'm here with the owner of this car, Sam. How are you Hello. going man? How are you man? Can you tell us a little bit about your pride and joy over here man? So basically I bought the car when I was 17, it was my first car. I remember just being 16, like just trolling through YouTube, seeing guys in the States with the GT swap um, and like turbo conversions, all that sort of stuff. And like, yeah, just straight away, I knew that that's what I wanted to do with the car one day. So when it got to about the 300,000 K mark, just decided it was time for a change. So we bought the engine, we took it apart. It needed a set of pistons. It needed some machine work, all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, yeah just the ball, the ball started it rolling. It spiraled. Yeah, it got out of control. I wanted to keep it as standard as I could from the outset. You know, I didn't want to draw too much attention to myself wanted to keep it as sleeper in a sense as I could um, and uh, yeah just have the power have the drivability and that's exactly what it is like it ticks all the boxes it's crazy that after 10 years you've achieved everything that you kind of wanted with this car yeah. speaking of engine bays yeah. let's pop the uh, engine bay and show us all that 2JZ goodness and you pretty much painted this car as well yeah, right? so when I was a second year apprentice um, I painted the car um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a painter by trade. Hence, Sweet man, you know, this is bay. so juicy. Basically what we have here, obviously the completed motor, it was just combined effort of my dad, my brother, yeah. um, myself, you know, a few friends along the way, which I'm really appreciative for as well. That's awesome man. It's cool that you guys built this car from the ground up and could you tell us a little bit more about the engine base specifically and yeah no worries so basically what we have um new mishimoto radiator the engine has got cp forged pistons uh spool i-beam rods uh bpp billet main caps um the head is pretty standard it's just got a set of cantec 272 degree camshafts uh bc springs and retainers and um yeah just the all necessary stuff adjustable cam gears bosch 2200 cc injectors turbo smart fuel pressure reg a couple of warbro fuel pumps uh, then moving over to the turbo side. So to be honest, we kind of blew the budget on the long motor um, So we just thought we'll build the engine once we'll do it right and um, All the other stuff we'll just buy some entry-level bits and pieces and we we'll just see what we can do with them And yeah, you know, that's what it's all about in my mind like yeah. just do it once testing. do it right Yeah, 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 and you know just testing parts and seeing what we could get away with so we've got just uh, GT 4294 turbo this actually came from eBay. It was just a cheapie. That's so um, sick. Yeah, man. I yeah. rate that. Same thing with like the intercooler <laughs> and the intake. They're just, you know, what? cheaper, cheaper items. So you've really dressed it up in the bay in the way that it looks honestly super high quality parts, but still it's parts that actually work, which is yeah. the insane aspect yeah. about it. That's definitely what we're going for. And like, I, I had no expectations. It was like, we don't know how long mm. any of this is going to last. Like, you know, turbo intake, intercooler, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I thought, you know, might as well dress it up, might as well make it look as good as we can. So you're making 520 thing. rear wheel kilowatts? 520 rear wheel kilowatts on 28 PSI. Wow. Uh, the turbo is almost maxed out at that point. So right. yeah, we'll see what happens down the line. Maybe we'll downgrade to something a little bit mm. more efficient, or maybe we'll even go up. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, That'll yeah, be. We'll see what happens. Pretty wild. And yeah. you ran a. 9.6 on the quarter mile? Yep, 9.6 at 148 mile an hour. So, yeah. That's I, super quick, man. Yeah, at the same time, like it is very drivable. Like I said, um, I daily drove it without any issues. Um, it's got all the creature comforts, you know, heated electric seats, uh, air cons there, heaters there. That's what you roof. want, man. All credit to Toyota. Like they make a nice car and Lexus as well. Um, it always handled well, in my opinion. It always stopped well, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Um, and like that's why we haven't really changed any of that. Like yeah. it's got uh, BC VR coilovers in it. Um, we've got the standard struts in it at the moment because that's how we race it. We need the travel and the suspension. So you race it with stock coilovers and BCs at the back? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how we do it. Um, yeah, so just to get the power down, wow. we need the car to, to squat and the standard yeah. suspension has the height and that's yep. what we need. So yeah, basically when we go racing, I race it as is, except it's got a set of radials on the back. That blows my mind, man. Yeah. Most of these drag cars, they have like custom suspension. They've yeah. got the whole tail shaft done That's up. That's right. And they've got big rear ends, all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this, this doesn't have that. No, it doesn't. Oh. It's just like, yeah, obviously uh, we have a tail shaft to suit uh, the power glide. And then right. uh, the rear end is factory, like 300,000K. Like I haven't even changed the drive shaft, like IS300. Um, the bushes are like stock as well, right? Yeah, all the bushes Jeez. are stock. I've only changed the things that I've needed to change. Yeah. And like, you know, that's that's the fun of it in my mind. You just do what you can with what you can and you push the envelope and, you know, that, I think that's how you make the most progress. I think the motto of, you know, don't fix anything till it's, it's broken. broken. That's yeah, right. like yeah. that really shines through in this building. Exactly. What a car, guys. I can't wait to experience this and see what it's all about. I'm a big fan of the IS chassis. As you guys know, I have an Alteza drift car. And I think this is really just the craziest IS yeah, out possibly, here. Quite possibly, yeah, yeah. And we have that literally on video for you guys to check out. So I can't wait to experience this thing. Again, huge shout out to yeah, Sam yeah. for allowing me thank to showcase you, man. it. Thank you, thank you. This thing is something else. So if you guys have been enjoying the content thus far, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And guys, let's get straight into this video. Alright guys, we are jumping in the 2JZ turbocharged IS300. This thing is going to be a riot. I've always wanted to experience one in. Obviously, they don't come with a turbo from factory. And definitely not a big turbo like this car has been set up. But this is probably one of the most extreme examples out here in the country. Especially one that's street registered and road driven. This is going to be epic. So right off the bat, this car has a two-speed power glide transmission. It's really easy to operate. I've become quite familiar with these cars as of late and it's just a really nice, easy transmission that handles a lot of power. So let's pop down the windows a little bit. So right off the gates, this car is very similar to my Toyota Altezza. In terms of the interior and the cabin, everything is, as you would know and expect from a standard IS chassis car, you've got the typical Rolex style, watch-like cluster design but as it is the IS300 is the top of the line in terms of luxury and comfort for this particular chassis you've got this sunroof which is fully operational you've got aircon a lever throughout the interior you've got electric seats everything is fully equipped in this car and if you think about it this is a 20 year old vehicle but it really doesn't feel like that and it's still got that premium feel about it that you just know and love so let's just see how this car is you have to remember that this car is still set up on essentially its stock suspension. So up the front, Sam has put in the original coilovers or the standard shocks. And it's got a really nice stance on it. And up the back, you've got BC Racing coilovers, which are just pretty much entry level coilovers. And in this current setup with drag slicks in the rear, he's able to run the 9.6 quarter mile pass at 148 miles per hour. That is absolutely insane. But as it is, just cruising around town, the car is really quite sedate, it's compliant over the road, it's really comfortable, and the noise of it really isn't too loud if you're just potting around. It's really quite nice, and at the end of the day, you've obviously got really comfortable and light steering. This is, and would make for, an epic daily driver, and that's essentially what Sam set out to achieve when he first bought this car, and through the evolution, Nearly 10 years on, it's become what it is now. And at the heart, still the 2JZ, but this is the GTE, which has been derived from the Aristo. And it's got a fully forged and built engine. There's a whole list of modifications and upgrades, and I'll list it all in the description below. But essentially, it's got a GT42 turbocharger. And with all of those things combined, it's making a grand total of 520 rear wheel kilowatts on E85, which is 700 horsepower at just the rear wheels. So let's just see how it fares, guys. <laughs> it's pretty quick, guys. That sounds sick. 
and when you're putting it through the corners, not bad of a car to do so in. But then when you're on a straight and you want to go, <laughs> I can really see how Sam has run a 9.6. This thing is light speed quick and it's not scary to jump on. It insinuates a level of confidence and you can just get on it. That's wild. It's actually insane. It's so good to drive. It's so smooth and linear. The way that the flutter sounds in this car in conjunction with the 2JZ Scream. Honestly, it's probably the best in terms of engine combinations and sound. It's just, oh my God. I'm gonna offend a lot of people, but I think personally the JZ is just unreal. In every single aspect of the word sleeper, this is a car that truly encapsulates that. It is so understated and inconspicuous you honestly wouldn't be able to tell what is packing underneath the bonnet. Apart from the front mount cooler, the slightly loud exhaust, you really couldn't tell and I really like how it's been done up. But honestly, this car is an absolute weapon. We've got the car turned up to full power now on high boost and let's see how it goes guys. 4,000. It grips on standard wheels and tires. It's running road tires, guys. It doesn't have slicks. It's got a standard rear axle. It's essentially got stock callovers at the front and BCs at the rear, and still it's able to do that. People use these cars for daily driving, but the potential for drag racing, for circuit racing, and for drift. This is truly a car that is so all-rounded. You know, in the big power, barrows and those sorts of cars they're quite aggressive in the way that it just comes on and it's quite ferocious in a sense it's not to say that the barra is a bad engine it's just so powerful and all-rounded but this thing is just ready to go have a look at that it's nuts guys it's actually sickening even with all that power I thought at first you would lose a little bit of that drivability, but if I had to pick flaws about this car, there really isn't that much. I mean, yes, it's not the best handling car with the setup in terms of power delivery down low. There really isn't much about it. It's a little bit clunky with the two-speed power glide. But apart from that, it is still such a great car and it's just made me appreciate this build in so many more ways and I just have yeah, I'm honestly lost for words. It's so good to drive, guys. Let's just send it one more time. Here we go. Sam, you have truly built something epic. I've had such a joy driving this car. I really want to say a huge thank you for allowing me to showcase it. I know it was down to the wire getting this car ready, but man, this is something else. And I really think he's hit the nail on the head with this build. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to smash that thumbs up button in the comments below. Tell me what you like about this big turbo 2JZ Lexus IS300. And as well as that, consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please take care. Bye for now.